counting down like three, two, and then as we said one, <laughs> it's like one of those cartoons where you've gone like that, his cheeks have just exploded. <laughs> and, then <it's, laughs> and then literally you can picture it, it's all come out and he is absolutely gutted. Because oh. <laughs> he was so close uh, and I'm, I've never seen Promise it's the last time we do this. Ryan, having been dropped as captain, gone on a week long bender in New York, missed training. He then didn't feature in the match day squad for Glasgow's emphatic victory over Cardiff. Are you still employed by the club? Right, rewind, rewind. Again, we didn't need to mention it, but remember, I, it wasn't just a piss up for five days or a week or whatever we're making out to be. I went to my best friend's wedding. I was best man at a best friend's wedding, which we all agreed was absolutely fine. Max, yes? Completely condoned. So just ease off on it, boys. Ease off on it. Yes, I yeah, miss no, training. I'm, I'm with you. But it's probably mainly to do with the Queen's funeral. Again, not my fault. Some perceive it as my fault. It's not my fault. And so, yeah, I missed training and therefore I didn't play this week. I don't know whether it was because I missed training or whether I'm not getting selected. We'll soon find out this week. But hey, Glasgow got a win and that's all that matters, boys, because it is a squad effort, Mark. In this organisation, it's a squad effort. It's not individuals, it's a squad effort. And that is what we want. We want the squad to win and we won and we hammered them and we played bloody well. Jack Dempsey on absolute fire. Max, you would have loved it, mate. Hilarious. Yeah. Like almost obnoxious. It put someone through like right near the end, puts Tom Gordon through on this little line and mate, he's off with the guns out the holster Boys are accelerating over the trial and he's not. He's running down the touchline, giving the guns <laughs> to the fans. Oh, yeah. Guns to the fans. And then back in the holster. Oh, my. I've never seen anything like it. I wish I had a presence of mind. That's very good. Yeah. It, no, I it's all right. It. You've, you've, said, you've spoken that like a true statesman of leadership. Yeah, good from you. That Your ex-captaincy coming out right there. Very exactly. nicely. There for the boys. There for the boys. So yeah, we'll find out. On on you know on the note of having a job, I probably should check my um my bank balance see if I'm getting paid. I've not done that yet. So imagine that. Just find out that I'm actually not meant to be there for the last two months. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. But Max, you had a good weekend, didn't you? Oh yeah, it was a really really lovely weekend actually. Friday night though, I went bowling and I lost to my girlfriend. It was really embarrassing. Oh really? really? I, I got a score. I got a score of um seventy eight. It wasn't good. It was really bad. Is that like if you finish with seventy eight, that's not good, is it? I don't know, but not being sexist, did she use the thing where you roll the ball down the little ramp? No, 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 no. She doesn't. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a professional athlete, and yeah, I could. I, I just went full dyspraxic and was just yeah. hitting gutter balls left, right, and rhubarb. But that's what happens yeah. with people with muscles your size. They get really. I can imagine yeah. just trying to absolutely launch it down the alley, yeah. and like, it's all about just being fluid. Finesse. Yeah. No, you know what? I, I figured it out on the last few, pal. It's about the stiff hand. So as the ball leaves the hand, your hand, your wrist shouldn't deviate from the path. So as the ball is released, your hand's solid like a gauntlet. And then it like it flies true. But I was like just letting it kind of like limp wristed flying and just dominating my um sort of wrist and it, it didn't go well for me. But well, um try going with kids, mate, because when you go with kids, you then zero nothing goes then towards you bowling. All it is is, do you remember Kingpin, the film where he gets the tie stuck in the thing? And like, how good's that film, by the way? All, all I'm worried about is kids putting their hands down the thing where the ball's coming yeah. out and no one getting their arm chopped off. So I don't actually get to focus on the bowling. But yeah, Kingpin, what a film. Oh, what a film. But yeah, Saturday was a great day out, down at the game. It's the last, it's like the last 10 minutes of the play. Um, Ed Holmes has a, a savage break off a, off a box kick from Andy Urin, perfectly weighted. And in terms of offloads to AJ McGinty, who keeps the ball alive. To Daniel Thomas, who hits Harry Thacker on a scorching line, takes it into the heart of the London Irish defence, right on the line. And guess who? Yours truly is there to sweep up the pieces and seize glory. <laughs> Outstanding. And I can see you with the, with the, the finger. Did you see it? <laughs> I couldn't even get up. I was giving it the big ones. <laughs> and probably like, he, he, he. <laughs> I've over celebrated, lads. I'm, I'm I'm proud of it. So that was my I think that's my fourth fourth try in the premiership, yeah. And on top of that, it's all been the same. It's just all pick and goose. The Lord of Chaos. Yeah, I'll take them all. 
It got how a bit lo- cagey. How loose, how loose was that bloody game, by the way? It's the optional defence for you lot down there. I mean, <laughs> we'll got, get on to it, it as well. Weird, the, um, it, what was the game? The, the Exeter Quinns game we'll get on to later. But, man, it's just like... Oh, what a game. Defense. Yeah. Mate, it was pure basketball, wasn't it? Like end-to-end stuff. Um, that Henry Arundel guy, oh my God, his hamstrings and glutes are forged in the eye of a dying meteorite. My God, the man can move. <laughs> yeah, but uh, oh, yeah, up oh, close, Max, oh. up, up close, genuinely, what does what, he look like an absolute specimen? Or he just looks like a normal person. Nah, he does, he does have, there is some hypertrophy, there is some sincere development of the posterior chain, my friend. Baby-faced, but yeah, like a uh, metahuman. Of the, what are those of the things? Velocity I, bet, I bet he does, you know, they're normal. Picks. I bet he can go down and yeah, come back yeah. up. Absolutely, like nose to touch, pick up a Pringle off the floor, back up again. Yeah, yeah. Just eat a whole bag of chips like that. I'm twelve green bands, like yeah, like, creaking <laughs> down. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, yeah. uh, piglet then, like, springs. Piglet springs. Press up off the floor. Um. Oi. By the way, remember the team we selected at the beginning of the season, like, like the the guys that are going to absolutely come up. Will, Will Josephs as well, mate. He's oh. that little try from him, Paddy Jackson and mm. Will Josephs carved up on the right hand side. Very silky. Yeah, yeah. they were. They were. Um, that Pearson fella as well. He is like a greased bull, a nightmare. To, it's weird because he's like not massive, but he just always finds himself on line breaks. Very good, like finesse runner off the ball, like uses it well. Um, but yeah, very good player. Um, but yeah, it was a great day out. We got it done in the end. Um, managed to score more points than them and therefore we won. <laughs> <laughs> That's my technical I, break. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm with it. I, I think, yeah, why not? Yeah. Like, There's a better way to play rugby, rugby, isn't it? You'd rather that totally than 3 all or 6-3, wouldn't you? Oh, absolutely. We're here to advertise the great, great facets of this wonderful game. And we did that, both teams, but yeah, with aplomb. But yeah, How was good. Bristol it was good. after? Uh, I went for a few down at the tobacco factory, actually. Yeah, it was lovely. Just a couple of, just a couple of stealthy ciders down the hatch, a couple of dark and stormies, then shut eye. I know, I know we've got to get on and I might be leading us astray here. So sorry, Mark, like spank me back into line if you need to. But Max, your story the other day on Instagram, that place that you call work, that training facility, that you start, it's like something out of fucking the Batman's lair. It's unbelievable. I've never seen yeah. anything like it. Like it's fun, spawners. Isn't it? Fucking hot yeah. tubs. Yeah. Mate, I, 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 would, I would happily spend all day there. I wouldn't I wouldn't moan about spending all day there. It looks unbelievable. The food. Did you see the steak, Mark? Oh, the what? sirloin steaks. Are you like fucking yeah, yeah, sirloin you... steaks. A rock fort salad. Today we had a niçoise, a deconstructed rustic niçoise with a seer de tuna tacky. It was wonderful. And then what was the main? It was like a, a chicken breast, so moist and tender. My God, it was like like feathery. It was delicious on the palate with like a a, um, a sort of chowder, a sweet corn chowder from the coasts of, um, where is it? East of, yeah, North America. You know, those um, New England chowders? Oh, delicious. Um, yeah, it was very good all around. Yeah, good, great, great, great feed. I had Sorry, like, I'm seriously some caffeinated. overcooked pasta. What do you have? Boiled chicken? Boiled chicken. <laughs> Oh, oh, bless. I hope the chef's not listening. I think he actually got married at the weekend, so he wasn't even there today. But, but mate, boiled chicken, a little bit of um, overdone pasta, and then, mate, the potato salad, I was chuffed, just covered in mayonnaise. That was about it. Well, that'll do the job, kind of. Not really. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just right. That's a very, that is the most beige the plate ever. You know what I'm <laughs> Wow. You just got wallpaper paste on your goddamn plate. Yummy. Max, has your, has your mum been the cutouts of the Sunday Times and all of the BBC sport oh, website because it yeah. was your beautiful mug of all I mean what there were 11 tries and they picked your uh, one uh, as as the shot uh, that was across all of the all of the media outlets it, it was it was the build up of that try that was quite 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 mesmeric though wasn't it Ed Holmes the big sit down fan the ball being kept alive it was like a throwback to the, the rugby of old but yeah I'm so glad I got to be on the end of that I wasn't even sure like when I got to the ball I was like oh should I pick and go there was like a good second and a half where I hesitated and was like I'm gonna do it I'm doing it oh my god I've done it and then um yeah then flashback but yeah I got I got some um yeah I got a few whatsapps it was fun Fun to know you're still sort of relevant to those nearest and dearest. <laughs> <laughs> he's still alive. Uh, oh, he's still doing it. <laughs> yeah.
Right, now, now it's time for our offload weekly challenge inspired by the lads' infamous milk challenge at the end of last season. Those who haven't seen it, go and check it out. It's brilliant if you want to see Ryan uh, just yak his body weight in milk. Uh, each week we'll set them a short viral food or drink challenge and the person with the most victories at the end of the season will be the champion. The loser will face a rather large forfeit this week the challenge is the cream cracker challenge very simple all you have to do is eat three crackers in a minute either way the quickest wins no water allowed <laughs> hold on when did the forfeit come in where's the forfeit oh, do you think oh boys do you think we, it's just for banter like oh we'll do it yeah, for yeah, like, no, on, like enough, honor it's the forfeit well we'll work it out we'll yeah, work something work out that's so yeah, random yeah, that nice. will involve quickly, Max, similar talk to me about functions. your techniques are you going to nibble or are you going to try and smash them just quickly See, i haven't done these you've already pre- you've got a palate sense of what's going on i had one earlier with during this thing i've also not drunk anything since training like in terms of just had that and i've pretty much not drunk much all day <laughs> i've got a really dry mouth no yeah. i'm not making excuses this is going to be difficult just... three in a minute have we got a timer um, yeah, I'll get right. Marks on time. Marks on time. Marks on time. Marks on time. All right. I'll, do the, here we go. I'll do the timer. So, okay, My boys. wife's calling me. Um, she's going to be like, where are you? Oh, I'm just eating crackers. <laughs> eating <laughs> crackers. <laughs> what is wrong Okay, with boys. Do. I'm going to do on. It's going to go three, two, one. Then you're going to go. Wait, 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 wait. And then you will start. You've got a minute. Three, two, one. Let's go. I'm crying. Lahif, one cracker down. Wilson, like a hamster, attempting to eat his, um, is only probably a third of a cracker. No, he's still got about a third. Lahif still chewing through that first one, as is Wilson, although Wilson's Wilson's now into two. He's oh my into God. two. They're driving about the, halfway through. The power company. Don't let me long. <laughs> You've got 30 seconds left. Mm-hmm. Okay. Two very different tactics we've got from the Scottish tactic from Ryan Wilson. Nibble, nibble, nibble. Uh, Leif's English version is is big, big takes, big takes. But no, Leif still not done two. Whereas Wilson into third. You've got 10 seconds, 12, 15 seconds, 10 seconds, sorry. Now 10 seconds, 10 seconds. And Leif's got all three. They've both got all three. Can they finish? Can they finish? Three, two, one. (laughs) Ah. Wow. I did it. Yes, Wilson. I did it. Yeah. I think I've done yes. it. Yes. You have done it. Max, and look at him. He's got a big Max. ball of cement in his mouth. Look, look <laughs> show, come closer, listen. Max. Mate, come on, get it down. You've got to finish it. We're on the timer still. I could do another 10. <laughs> Mate, screw the milk, <laughs> Joe. I thought it was supposed to be, you know, gracious. What is it? Humble and That's gracious in victory. Yeah. Boys, um, unfortunately, I, that was I think I just did it. Oh, Ryan, you did. We, got, we have oh, a second timekeeper, oh, and heartbreakingly, you were a second over. Well, that was very impressive, right? Because that's it, that's very different. They're drier than Gandhi's flip. Yeah, My think God, you've just got to go small nibbles, I reckon, Max. I, I'm, yeah, I'm going to go right. home and try that tonight, and I'm going to, I'm going to time it and film it myself. I won't, don't worry, I won't put it anywhere. I will just wait, and then I'll just prove that I can do it. You're right. It's it. like the um, it like builds up into a sort of mass, and then you're fucked. Yeah, I bet you any money. Someone comments like, "That's not the real cracker challenge. You have to put all three in your mouth at once, or something like that." You know, you fucking losers like the Gloucester milk challenge. Oh, you didn't. You know, you've drunk the wrong milk, <laughs> or you can't call it the Gloucester milk challenge. It's ours because we drink milk. Okay, right, boys. Well, that's that's our <laughs> offload weekly challenge. Ryan Wilson, one. Max Lahif, zero. First, welcome Jake Pelledry on the show. Um, how are you doing, Jake? I'm not too bad, thanks. I was just, I was just thought I was interrupting. Now. I was just about to put it on mute. <laughs> no, 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 not at all. How are you going, Jackie boy? <laughs> no, I'm good, thanks, mate. Yeah, all good here. Uh, just good to be back playing, really. Um, it's very, very. It's a usual, unusual feeling for me being sore after a game now. Yeah, well, I bet it's a nice feeling. I don't know what it feels like this season yet. <laughs> You've been on a lot of holidays. I've seen that. <laughs> oh no, 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 no! no. It, uh... I was at a wedding. I was at a wedding. It wasn't holiday. It was a wedding yeah. I had yeah. to go to, which was planned. 
Well, actually, well, actually, Jake, just give us a bit of context, though. You know, it's great for you to be back out, but you've had a, a sort of, you know, torrid 20 months where you you were told your, potentially your career was going to be over after completely wrecking your leg against Scotland. Um, how did it feel to be back out there? It was amazing. I mean, just I've been training since like kind of May time, but, you know, playing a game is completely different. But, um, you know, just even just you know, strapping your boots up or even just the game day prep, which... You know, as an injured boy, you never get to eat the high fuel <laughs> foods or anything like that because, you know, you've got to be watching your weight while you're injured. But um, even like the game day routine, um, getting back to it and stuff like that is, is crazy. And then obviously during the game, uh, the lungs were gone. So that, but that was pretty, that's pretty um, standard, I think. It was nothing unusual, but um, yeah, just got to get that game fitness up. But um, in terms of the game itself, it was really good. And then afterwards, I felt like I've been hit like a bus, uh, and uh, which is obviously a good thing because it's back to that. Um, you know, after a game you're ruined. So um, it's, it's just, a, it's been a weird, because it's been so long, it was a weird feeling, but um, I'm glad to be back in the mix for sure. Some people say that, I've never been injured for that long, luckily, touch one wrestle. <laughs> but some people say they actually miss the feeling of the next day after playing a game, you know, how you're absolutely wrecked. I, mate, I would never miss that. Like, is it true? <laughs> Do you sort of miss that? I think I think it's 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 missing doing something right. So it's it's more it's not the actual feeling. I think it's more of the I know I played yesterday. You know the the kind of the feeling of playing and then the reward of playing and then you've got that the next day game. Uh, you know day one um, where you are you know you are literally you know sore as anything. You can't move. You like that that. I guess the actual feeling of being sore, no. Uh, but the fact that you played the day before is is probably what I miss more. Yeah, I suppose when. So many people have told you, oh, listen, there's potentially no chance of you playing a game. This might yeah. be it. Makes it feel even better, doesn't it? Yes, yeah, it's, it's. I mean, for the first year of my injury, um, there was, you know, we didn't even know if I could play again. So it was the knee injury obviously happened. And then I, it's called like an EMG, so like a nerve test. And we didn't have that till a year in. Um, I think there was nothing on the EMG, which obviously means, you know, you've either got permanent nerve damage or it's net, like it's never coming back but we don't know it's coming back yet. And then from the year point of my injury, there was slight, um, almost like flickers, it's almost like a heartbeat scanner in like, you know, you see on films, like the, that's that when you move your muscle, that happens. And that's like the electric um, kind of, I don't even know, I'm getting way out of my terms here, but the, the kind of the stimulus in your muscle that's activated. Um, and when you see that, obviously then we knew my nerve is going to recover, but that took a year. So that was a dark year. Um, and that from that point, obviously, it's all exciting because even though it's still to another year, but it was the case of, you know, I am going to play again, which is crazy. What, so For those it, that don't know the details, give us give us a bit more like uh, how bad the injury actually was. Uh, so I did my ACL, PCL, LCL, so which is like electric corner. Um, I fractured my leg. Um, I tore my calf grade three and then ruptured my hamstring off the bone, um, which was the injury and then oh, where you all all in one go <laughs> yeah in a slip as well it wasn't it was non-contact um so i i did all that and because i did my lateral corner that's where your nerve essentially connects your spine yeah. yeah to your foot and because i did three ligaments my knee was so loose i stretched i stretched that nerve oh. um luckily never severed it because if you sever it they can there is an operation but the chances of you walking normally again are very slim um but the fact i didn't sever it and only pulled it. it it i got explained it was like it's like to to put it into terms that i understood it's like an electric cable you've got the hard outer cabling and then you've got your three wires inside when you pull it uh i pulled the three wires inside and then that obviously severed that inside but kept the outer wire intact which obviously meant i was going to recover but if you do sever it that's that's how you become you know like you know uh, almost like uh, what word am I looking for here? But you can't you can't move your foot yet. It's a drop foot for life, essentially. Yeah, drop foot. Yeah. So that was that was the injury, which is which is that was, it, that was no that when was that? It was in twenty twenty, was it? Yeah, I think top of head fourteenth November twenty twenty. Yeah, Fuck. which is a long time ago. Yeah, and then I had my first movements on like October, uh, like the beginning of October twenty one. So that's how long it took for me to know rugby is going to be a thing again. Did part of you start going, right, shit, I need to think of something other than rugby here? And if you did, what was it going to be? Because there's some, been some chat thrown around that you were pretty good when you worked at Subway. <laughs> yeah, I can make a hell of a sandwich, I'll tell you that. Um, so no, What's your go-to sandwich? 
<laughs> no, uh, so there, there was there was a there was a dark uh, side, yeah. And there was luckily before my injury, like literally two weeks before, I um, kind of launched like a cider business, like it was like a we now sell cider in like the West Country. Um, so we we do that, and that's kind of grown a little bit. We've got our own unit now, but I did launch that two weeks before. Um, good luck, bad luck, whichever way you look at it. But uh, that kind of kept me busy throughout the injury period and it is still going now which is very good but um yeah hey, plug uh, it what is it plug it yeah, what's the cool? uh, yeah. <laughs> just just press cider it is, it's a craft cider business so we do a fair few blends uh dry sweet berry cider now as well um and we we're... love cider don't we max <laughs> yeah, we, well, do I'll send you... we do dabble <laughs> yeah i'll send you some but we're so uh, we kind of, as well as that, we're, we've got like a, a new one, which is called Fratello. Um, now I'm, I'm in the plug zone here, so I'm just plugging. Yeah. Plug oh, yeah, plug. yeah, yeah, go on. The, I'm the, in. The, new, the new one's Fratello, which is, means brother, because um, obviously my brother passed away recently. Um, so now we're installing kind of defibs in the area. So Max, you might know on the downs, um, uh, up yeah. by that big space there's a lot of pc areas a uh, pc trainer sorry and in a big area of football on a sunday because uh, i grew up literally you know 10 minutes away from there my brother was there as well but we've installed the defib there so on the cafe on the downs um there's one gone yeah. there with like kind of the family of, of kind of done some fundraising um and also one on millennium square which is the center where actually sam passed away um so we're trying to do do some good as well because obviously sam had cardiac arrest and it could have been saved if there was a public defib accessible already so uh, that's my plugs done for the evening. So that's good. And so the some of the money that goes from Fratello goes into funding. Yes. For- yeah, every can sold. We try and uh, try and raise up money to, to plug towards these these defibs. Um, so we did that. We've got the side of there. Um, we did some just general fundraising as well when Sam passed away. And then, then Sam's obviously now ex ex Mrs. Dad rode from Lands End to John O'Groats and raised something like six and a bit grand. So that's three defibs, which is crazy. Um, so they're, they're, when that gets kind of pro- like the proceeds are done, we'll, we'll be putting three three defibs up oh, good as well. Um, Jake, obviously it's incomparable this year. This 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 the sadness and you know obviously your bro- your brother passing. Um, how inexplic- inexplicably tough has has life been for you? Yeah, it's been it's been like a shit couple of years really because we I've I've, I've um, lost two grandparents and my brother as well and obviously my grandparents are older so it's, it's obviously very sad but at, at the same time you know brother's just so ex- unexpected but um you know it's it's been you know with the nerve damage the injury um a lot of time spent on the sidelines and then you know just to lose your brother just before you're you're back to playing is is even is even more brutal but I think it's just it's just got to you know take things positive I, it's, it's it's tough to say because obviously there isn't much positive about that but um, you know, Sam knew me as a rugby player, um, knew I, you know, was very severely injured, but the fact I'm back playing, you know, he'll be watching. So it's just about making it proud. And, you know, it can happen, you know, the research behind it and what we're, what we're doing is like, it can happen to anyone. Sam was fit, healthy. We had no idea he had any heart conditions or anything like that. And the fact it can happen to him, it can happen to anyone. So it's, it's just like, take, take everything as it comes every day. You know, it's a bit of a blessing and back playing rugby is even more of a blessing. So, um, you know, it's, it's sad, but at the same time, kind of just got to make him proud. And there's nothing we can do. It's it's, it's done. Um, oh, apart I from, can imagine you're pretty emotional going out there for your first game back after all that as well, man. Yeah, it was it was great. It was the the first one was heartbreak preseason, uh, and there was like 35 of us. Well, not us. I was on the pitch, but 35 in, in the crowd, uh, family, friends, close friends, and you know, it's it's amazing. And um, you know, the just support the support around it is 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 really good. And obviously gives me the the strength to get out there and it, you know it was pretty nerve-wracking to be fair playing for the first time in so long so um to have them there makes it you know all the easier yeah good man uh, jake apart from uh, purchasing fratello uh you, you've <laughs> set up a charity in your brother's name how, how can our listeners help support the cause so it's with the great western air ambulance which is um kind of like the or what would you call it like a subsidiary foundation so sam's got his own page on that um they're a, an amazing charity that actually helped try to help Sam uh, on on the evening, um, and they're based just on the motorway. Um, they're the kind of helipad you see on the M5 by um, by Cribs Causeway, uh, and you'll see it you'll see it as you drive past. But they're there, and they do kind of you know you know crazy amounts of work behind the scenes. It's all fundraiser and all that kind of stuff. So they they help Sam. So we chose to do the foundation with Sam, and you can go onto his page via their page as such. And Sam's got his own section. Um, and you can see everything that goes on. And we keep everyone updated as well. There is a Sam Pelevy Foundation on Instagram um, and obviously Just Press Cider as well. We, we give everyone updates as well to keep everyone in the loop about the defibs and, and where we've installed them. 
in the last few work. moments, we've got some breaking news for you, boys. Uh, Worcester Warriors have been banned from all competitions uh, from five o'clock today. Um, what, do, what, do we, what do we think of that, Jake? Uh, we, we've got them on Saturday, so that, that throws this banner in the works. I think, um, you know, it was based on their kind of social media campaign and what they were doing. I think it was expected, I suppose, um, just because they were saying their goodbyes that all we could do. Um, but it is, you know, it's crazy that, you know, we're, we're at this part, it's almost like, you know, like London Welsh or, or whatever, going, you know, throwing mm. back. But, um, it is mental in this modern era, but I suppose it's the kind of knock-on effect of COVID. But, um, yeah, I just feel so sorry for, you know, people in that situation um, and the staff and the players. I know the players got paid last month, but it still doesn't help them this month or, or going forward. So it is a, uh, a kind of shit situation. Um, and given the kind of what, what, what's gone on with the salary cap, it's just brutal for boys. You know, it's what they got 40, 50 players now out of contract or whatever. And it's just a, a shit market out there. So it, it just, if, if there wasn't, there was a problem before the season started with just people just generally, now there's going to be even more of an issue. So it's, it's just, it's just shit. Like, there's, there's no other way to put it really. Yeah. Cause there was that thing with a hundred premiership players getting their contracts cut right at the beginning of the season, wasn't, wasn't there? So yeah. Yeah. now with these guys and then all the chat with wasps going on as well, yeah, and what do you well. do if you've got a family and stuff like that? You know, it's yeah, it's sketchy. Oh, brutal, isn't it? Fuck. Horrible. It's mental because like, you, you think like footballers or whatever, they they've got you know millions of pounds saved up. If they went like a year without it, they don't it doesn't affect them. But boys like like you know, like ourselves, don't have that sort of <laughs> cash lying around unless you've got a big <laughs> cash pot. So it's unless you're Ron it's, Wilson. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That way. Always on holiday. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, on. like really, no, no. the really? white battlers, the white battlers of the squad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you're normally being paycheck to paycheck, gentlemen. That's, yeah, that's uh, brutal, isn't it? Brutal. Yeah, I tell you, some people horrible. I think will benefit out of it. The likes of your Duhan van der Merwe's and that, you see him getting a big old contract down in France somewhere, won't you? It's mental. It's absolutely mental. They yeah, play the game. When did they they played on the weekend. They beat Newcastle, and then suddenly they go in Monday, nothing. Yeah, and, they, and they've been playing really well as well. I, I know that all the shit that's going on in the background, but, you know, obviously they've had to put their hands up and maybe some of the players might have seen this coming, so they might have been trying a bit harder. But they the last couple of games, they've, they, you know, like regardless of the, the scorelines or whatever, they smashed Newcastle. I think they just lost to Exeter, if I'm right in saying. So, yeah. they, you know, they, they, they were really putting hands up and it's just shit that there's nothing they can do. It's like out of their control, right? So it's... No matter, as a rugby player, you play well, you, you tend to get good things when your squad plays well. But the fact they've been doing that and it's been taken out of their hands and they're still in a shit situation regardless is, is you know, just kind of sums it up, really. I heard all the academy boys, am I right, had to move out of their homes and uh, move yeah, out of their boys, academy houses, yeah. move in with the older guys. Mm. I mean, I, I'd stick a few of them in my house, but the caretaker that lives on the ground in the house that's owned by six ways or whatever it is, he's had to move out of his house, the poor bloke. So, I mean, what happens to him? Yeah, mad, isn't it? Um, let's um, let's let's just finish around just on that point. Wasps kind of in a similar situation, uh, asking to go into administration now. So potentially we we've got again a whole bunch of other players who might be um, out on the market uh, very soon. Um, do, does is there a feeling though within kind of the rugby circles that wasps are in a slightly different situation, like it's going to be fine for them or? Or, or well, potentially could be just as bad. I think there was murmurings about them for a while, though. Maybe two, two, been about two or three years now. I've heard that the, they're battling that because that Rico deal was a bit strange, wasn't it? Going off to Coventry to fill an absolute mausoleum of a stadium with about fifteen people and their dogs, like it didn't make much financial sense to me. Yeah. And you escape like all your history, which is in London. Then you go off to Coventry. It's a bit strange, uh, but uh, well, I, I'm bigger and better men behind the money have made that decision, so it hasn't worked out for them. But, but what, so, what is the crack with? Are they in a similar sort of? I don't really know the. I don't know the ins and outs of it. Yeah, is it they are definitely me? fucked H with the bond. Yeah, HMRC, but they are also fucked because they issued bond bonds to pay for effectively that move a while back, and they can't afford to repay the money that they owe effectively. So. A load of people have spent money on buying these these wasp bonds, and the minute they matured, they're like, can't afford it, so they owe cash. Yeah, fuck. It, it, I, I suppose it just can't be his back. So I don't know as much 
as much about it. Right? If you, I think if it was blowing up, you'd you'd hear about it. That's the only thing I can think. It can't be obviously it's not too bad. Yeah. But the fact that you know you'd hear about it everywhere if they were um, up shit street, I suppose. But I imagine by the sound of it, they're they're not in a great place. But um, yeah, I don't know. Obviously, <laughs> they were planning on the move to be really good, and if they can't afford uh, the bonds they took out, I suppose. Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Don't know what's going on there, really, because I, yeah, like as you said, but everything in the press is about Worcester, isn't it? So we just know, um, you know, because if we if we didn't hear about it as much in the press, we wouldn't even we wouldn't even know it was as bad as it was. Really, it would filter out. But yeah, I suppose. You know, I like to think hypothetically sometimes, right? And we've already worked out. Jake could go and work at Subway for his mom and dad. <laughs> Maxi, what are you doing? Right, like, you shouldn't joke about it because it's blokes. Is... But tomorrow, you're done. You're done. Rugby's. You're right, kids. Um, tomorrow, rugby's done. What are you doing, Max? What are you doing? I probably set up sort of like some kind of. I just start selling um uh, S and C programs. I think online. You start doing what? S and C like strength and conditioning programs online. Oh hello, okay. Yeah, well, that's I what you do. You basically with... become a pit. PC. So I take I take all my money right that I've that I've saved my little my little egg and then yeah. I go off to, I disappear off to Bali with all that with and so I could live out sort of fairly frugally and live like a king on little I like and it then, I like it <laughs> and I'd set up some kind of um, e business and use my platform to sort of leverage some kind of sales that way and then go harder on that seeing as I'd have more free time as That's it's over. Fun. I think you should probably just quit. That sounds fucking just amazing. Just do that. <laughs> Look ripped like Leif. Yeah. That would be, that he's, would got be it, he's got nice it sorted. Yeah, yeah, the hench program. Oh, sorry. Yeah. When you start. <laughs> yeah, the athletic weapon. Yeah. yeah. Actually, Jake, I wanted to ask you something, just coming back to your injury. How did your, um, how does your foot feel now? Like on the field, like how did it feel? Does it still, is there still, obviously there's some inhibition. He's there, not so. going to say shit, is he? Because then, gosh, you're going to be like, fuck, go on. Mate. Can't fucking move it, mate. <laughs> <laughs> no, <he's>... Fucked. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> well, no, I just, with nerves, I've, I've, I've had some experience because I had like um, a compressed nerve in my survival spine and then my, um, my bicep sort of started to atrophy and my pec atrophied and like this whole half of my body is still a little bit atrophy, but the body has like these fascinating ways to sort of use the other muscles and recondition effectively for it. But just as you, as you say, it takes a lot of time for the nerve to heal because the nerves don't have any blood supply essentially. Isn't that, I think that's, that's what they, they yeah. tell you. Yeah. yeah. Like a hamstring injury or whatever, cause it's got mm-hmm. such a blood, blood supply. It can, it can heal very quickly in comparison. Uh, but in terms of how it, it feels, it feels like it is back to normal. So like the strength, so eventually, so not eventually, it, it basically goes, you get the aversion, which is the outward movement first. Um, that came first, which is another muscle. Um, so I, I'm not quite sure how it was, but the Tiban, I, I think, is split into two. So it's like the aversion comes first, which came, you know, that was the October. Um, and that was, I couldn't, so I could move my foot in and down absolutely fine uh there was no there was no lack of strength there which is why i could run because i, I could push off your calf was good yes your tibialis was your tibialis was battling yes so then that that's the one that atrophy if that yeah that's the word i guess i'm looking for you're you're more qualified now that's that i just used your word there so that was that was the, uh, that was the muscle that disintegrated um basically and then after a year and you just basically complex it um as soon as we got the right. Uh, as soon as we got the movements, we knew it was active. It was literally just smash the shit out of it. And the aversion comes first, the the, the lift comes second, and your toes come last. So uh, my big toe, uh, I would say it's not back to normal, but the rest of it is. And we're well over kind of 90 degrees in terms of the movement. It's just building, you know, it's built like you, like you said, when you take that muscle away for two years yeah. and then reactivate it, regardless how, you know, how, how often you do it. Um, but it's so difficult to do because where it's so weak, like I can't, I can't like um, you, when you're training it, you can't just stick like a weight on it and just do it because you know you, you, your foot can't cope with that. So it's about doing it with bands and all that kind of tedious stuff that goes with it. Um, but it literally is trying to yeah, just build it back up to where to where it was. Um, and yeah, you just got to keep smashing it really. And and like it is now, it's it's back. To, I like everyday life for me. I haven't got drop foot anymore, um, but there's still obviously room for improvement in terms of the strength. You know, but the main thing that came out of it for me was the Tiban, which is what Andy Williams said. 
which is the knee surgeon who I know I suppose everyone knows he's, he's top notch but uh, the Tiban has no stabilizing factor on your knee it's calf hamstring and quad that's on your knee so the the kind of the fact that it's potentially not up to full strength isn't isn't a problem with the with the knee and the fact that I can get over well over 90 degrees isn't a problem for, for running um, so you know it's it's back to it's like basically having your ankle strapped up quite heavily yeah, go, yeah. for a normal play so yeah no there's I don't feel any different on a pitch, um, apart from the fact I'm on it. Fascinating. Oh, very cool. Um, very, very interesting. Boys, let's just quickly whip around the uh, rugby championship uh, before we go into uh, Jake's career in a bit more detail. Uh, New Zealand winning what was uh, an incredible rugby championship with that emphatic uh, hammering of Australia. <laughs> what, what, boys, thoughts on, uh, on, on that win? What, the All Blacks hammering, hammering. Yeah, they, I was surprised by that. I was surprised. Maybe they were just like had enough. <laughs> yeah, they did. They didn't put much of a fight. They made so many mistakes, didn't they, the Aussies? Very scrappy. Yeah, they looked sloppy. In, in but, terms of the championship in general, it was, it was a it was a hard one. Yeah, you know, obviously talking about this game, but it, it was a weird a weird championship. It was wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> In anyone by a lot of points, there wasn't like a. <laughs> it was like almost like you flipping a coin of who who would win or who wouldn't. You didn't really know, but yeah, I think yeah that that was my opinion based on the kind of games and what I was watching. No, I was yeah. It was so, it was a South class. Africa. What's that? Who did we what, say we were going to win it? South uh, oh, sorry. Let me just remind you. Both said Australia. No, I said win. Australia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I yeah, said both, Australia going to be come back yeah, yeah. as a yeah. as a reaction. So, did not. Tight, they completely wrong. completely didn't. Damn the, and then um, we said South Africa would um, win and win the championship, and New Zealand's gone and done it. But um, I was laughing at the headline because it goes, "Is this the, the worst news? Is the worst All Blacks team to win the rugby championship?" <laughs> I was going by and by. Yeah, I suppose it is in like modern modern day in the modern day game. Yeah, I'd say so. Um, but I don't think that takes away from what's been achieved because. The whole competition was, as as Jake said, it was like anyone was on their day could have beaten anyone. It was it was so exciting and a lot of fun to watch. But maybe maybe we um we did critique the All Blacks pretty hard since Ireland. Like um and maybe they've actually got a lot better. Mate, the game was so loose again. It was just end yeah. to end, like just before that half time. It honestly blowing out your hoop if you're involved in that. <laughs> it was just up and down, up and down. People just hacking the ball everywhere. Um, I quite enjoyed watching it. It was a good match still. And, but yeah, the Aussies, like even when they were trying to exit, just little mistakes and they just kept shooting themselves in the foot. But yeah, the All Blacks, they deserved it, didn't they? I mean, what I'm looking at here. South Africa pushed them hard. But again, well, I thought we, we predicted South Africa to beat Argentina, but we expected South Africa to get a bonus point, and they did. Yes, right? that's what we expected. Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. And again, yeah, it, I think the South Africa Argentina score the, it flattered South Africa a little bit. I mean, well, there was only a score in it with eight minutes to go, and the RGs did pretty well, didn't they? So, yeah, fair play, New Zealand. They managed to scrape it through, and your old mate keeps his job, doesn't he? Yeah. Big fuzzy. Yeah, it does show again that decision from last uh, from last week with Foley and all that. The difference that that would have made to the overall how the how the table would have looked. Um, but in 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 any case, I, you're agreeing worse All Black side to win the championship. Oh, oh, Max, said, said, Max agreed, agreed to that. In. I didn't. Max agreed to yeah. that. I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> so what are you what are you saying? What's what's the worst team to what's the worst team to win it? That's a that's almost a compliment, isn't it? Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. Yeah. I'd like I'd like you to tell him that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. You guys are shit, but you sort of still won. Uh, I, I thought I thought at the beginning of the championship as well. Like, if you were to say New Zealand would have won it, you'd have been like, like literally they were so off form. So I think yeah, I probably would agree, but I, I wouldn't like to tell him that. I suppose. Yeah, it, it, it's. I'm not saying it as like a character flaw. <laughs> Jeez, I'm just going on. I'm no, just going on. The, taken, if you see, it is. now I've got my tail between my legs. But when Max, this, this is going to be one of those ones where you sit in bed tonight and go, "Oh, should I?" I shouldn't have said that. Why did I say that? Say <laughs> it and let it go. Let it go. Hey, hey. We'll be hey. laughing at the headlines, I think. When the All Blacks <laughs> win the rugby championship, they usually walk it, don't they? They win every game. Yeah, now, now, now he's no, just rowing back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. 
Fair, fair enough. Quick, just a quick word on on um, the incredible job that Michael Check has done with the Pumas. I mean, they they lost five you know five defeats last year, and, and this year they they were kind of had a, the slimmest of chances of in that going into the final match of actually winning the whole thing. Yeah, no, they've, they, he's, he's turned them around, hasn't he? They're looking good. They're looking exciting. They're passionate men, the RGs. They sure are. So I'm excited to see how they go over the next few months and then leading up to the World Cup. He's definitely done something, hasn't he? And he, they're pushing other teams. We might be saying, Matt, you know, with Max saying that it's the worst All Blacks <laughs> team ever. It's the best Argentina team ever. No, I think Argentina, one of the best Argentina te- Argentinian teams yeah. I've seen in a while. After that World Cup run in, the, in, in France back in the day. Oh... But no, it no, is lads, good to see. Lads, I can't even concentrate on the rest of the podcast now. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, just seriously, panic take it attacking. Out. Take it out, Ryan. Ryan's playing Geppetto with my fucking. Oh, no. <laughs> as long right. as you don't lads, slag leaving. off Azir Erasmus <laughs> like I did, as long as you don't slag off the South Africans like I did once, um, you'll be all right. I don't think many people in New Zealand listen to this. Whereas the stick I got for taking the piss out of Razzie's pants that day, Jesus Christ, <laughs> I wanted my blood for that. I'd always uh, uh, from a we've, we've got some RGs nice here and I can agree that they're definitely passionate people you can see that when they train but whenever I'm watching the games as well I don't know if you've always seen this out I just love to know like I'd love to sit there in like one of their training sessions because I feel like it's like you know European sides we concentrate mostly on like exits structure plays like this person's here at this point and stuff like that I'd love to just be like what what because <laughs> they're, they're so like loose and I, I swear like I, I don't know because I have no insight whatsoever but you know, the, the, I reckon they just play touch rugby the whole time. They, uh, they it's just great to do it. It is amazing to see. It's such a good spectator sport. I love it. What's that? What's is it? Is it Santiago Carreras? Uh, Carreras, yeah, yeah, yeah. The fullback, being ten you, anywhere, yeah. He's from Gloucester, isn't he? Yeah, he plays Gloucester. Yeah, he's, he's from Argentina, funny enough. But yeah, yeah. What's he like? Is he? Yeah, I know. Obviously, that's what I'm asking. <laughs> is he? Is he loose? Is he? Is he a bit of a nutter? Uh, what is it like on the field? Like, yeah, yeah, he's uh, like, um, he, he's um, like, unbelievable. The only bloke I know that will play fullback the whole time at the club or on the wing and then slot into 10 at international and absolutely carve up. Like, yeah, exactly. It, he doesn't train at 10 in Gloucester at all. So the fact he's just like slotting in there for the game, and you know what it's like international, you don't get you don't get time at all. So the fact he's just like flying in there and just, you know, just taking the 10 jersey is crazy. But that, that just credit to him. He's, he's like, a, like an amazing player. We call him King of the Skies. Like taking those balls at fullback and then just playing ten in the international is mad. Let's focus on you, Jake. Now, uh, before your injury, you were uh, Gloucester Young Player of the Year, followed by Player of the Year in two successive seasons. Do you, are there any regrets not holding out for England a bit longer? Were you always kind of set on on playing for Italy? Uh, I think at the time, so so uh, at the time, Conor O'Shea. It's when I first broke into Gloucester uh, into the first team, and Conor approached me, and he um, was like on, kind of on the phone and was saying, you know, we've got the big plan for the World Cup. Um, and as a as a youngster, um, kind of just breaking through to the first team was big enough, and then to be, you know, you know, given the opportunity to play international rugby and World Cup, um, I kind of grabbed it with two hands, um, and I've you know not looked back since. Really, I don't regret it at all. Um, I do exactly the same thing. I think, you know, playing a World Cup and Six Nations and, you know, all that kind of, all the big games is is crazy, like unbelievable experience. And I think it's kind of helped me at the time as well, you know, when I first started playing international rugby. Um, and, you know, yeah, I, I would never, never go back or, or hold out. Um, I think, you know, there's there's plenty of people and, you know, I, you know, you, there's plenty of people that can wait around or, or do whatever, but, um, you know, for me, it was just grabbing that opportunity to to play um, Six Nations World Cup, which is amazing. Is there any ever any contact from from England or from Eddie Jane? Uh, no, no, it was literally just Connor um, at the time, and yeah, there was there's never never been anything from from that side. Um, yeah, or, or Wales as well, because you can you can I think you can represent Wales, or you could have represented Wales, right? Yes, so yeah, could have, yeah. Um, it, again, no, nothing from there. Um, so yeah, it was literally just at the time that one opportunity and just went with it and, and kind of, yeah, just ran with it, really. Um, fair enough. You made your debut for Italy against Scotland in 2018. Give us your recollections of, of how special that, that day was for you. That was uh, unbe- like unbelievable. Uh, so it was, I actually started the game, which was amazing for a debut. Um, and, you know, had all the family in Rome, first international game. Um, you know, was learning the anthem before the game. Uh, that's, that's a joke. But yeah, it was uh, <laughs> 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 like unbelievable. And the fact that kind of the whole family came out, 
Um, you know, and he got the experience playing in the Six Nations as a debut as well. Was was unbelievable. There was a, I think there was an injury. I can't remember who, but um, you know, you just grabbed the opportunity, and it was like to play in that kind of as a you know as a kid and growing up. This is the kind of competition you watch, or um, you know, the most talked about competition. Competition and to play in it is is you know, it was just amazing. And the family was so proud. I think um, you know, Dad, you know, my brother was there. My other brother, you know, Sam and Lewis were there as well. Uh, Mrs, you know, Mum, everyone was there. So it was amazing. Obviously, you're a renowned ball-carrying, defender-beating phenom. <clears throat> what, which, which, uh, like, what, which bump-off has been, like, which one highlights, it makes you the happiest on your CV of dead people who have tried to tackle you? Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, name fine. names, name the names. <laughs> there is, yeah, there's, there's one um, that, that brings, I think it was against Scotland. Um, yeah, I'm trying to remember. <laughs> <laughs> what if I played in that game? Do I play in that game? <laughs> Scotland, and I've, I've seen it a few times. I've probably got it saved on my phone if you want me to play. I'm pretty <laughs> sure you sent it to me. I'm pretty sure you sent it to me. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Uh, there, there is, yeah, that, uh, I've seen that. <laughs> um, but the best one I think of where I've got Kieran Reid, but obviously... Um, that, oh, a, fucking a, name drop. Like like <laughs> Wilson, whatever. Ben Kieran Wilson. Reid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, old trout shoulders next. Yeah. <laughs> hey, right. right, listen, was it your debut? Uh, I'm not sure. I think it was. Uh, I'm I not sure. I've been your de- I was just trying to look after you, mate. Mate, you look good on your debut. Old yeah. fella like me, I was like, oh, listen, let him have his, let him have his fucking <laughs> I'm <in> this <laughs> bomb. Well, we won that game, though, didn't we? You did. Uh, um, it, I've it never was, lost. I've never lost against Italy. So yeah, I was all right. Thank same you. game. Laidlaw kicked it right at the end um, of the yeah, game. We were winning. Then he kicked the three, and then you, then you guys won. But I don't know if you remember seeing me after the initiations of the Italian team. Uh, in the, uh, it was like a almost like a Colise- Colosseum-like place, and they had shaved my head, but only in patches, and you had to leave it. I don't know if you, but it's it's um, literally everyone was in tuxedos, massive like you know mill like it is very yeah, showy. They, they do very, it well, don't they? The after after oh, dinner functions there. It was like disgraceful. <laughs> it was it was horrible and like they so it's in like a really posh place. Obviously the Italians love it, like all the food, wine, um, all that kind of thing. And then they shaved my head. I had literally like patches of hair. Uh, everyone was in tuxedos, and then I'd sing a song as well. I don't know if you remember that as well, but. Uh, oh, black, I black I, gold. I was well on my way, I think, because it's <laughs> it was. I love it. I actually yeah. loved going over there. They're some of the best like after match dinners ever. Like, yeah, they probably are. They do it so well. Like you said, black tie. I don't know if it's because it feels like it's always the end of the Six Nations when I go over there. Yeah, um, yeah. would that have been the last game of the Six Nations? It, it probably was. Yeah, because I, I was I was in, involved in the squads and then I was waiting for the opportunity, so it, it would make sense. It was towards the end. Yeah. I do remember that place though. Yeah, it was beautiful. It was big, like a Coliseum thing. You went inside and it was like, it was like yeah. an opera house or something, wasn't it? Yeah, literally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was, it was, yeah. It was... <laughs> what, what, what was the initiation though, apart from shaving your head? Oh, that is, that is literally it. That's so, it. Yeah. But then the, the, um, the, I think it's, I think it was because obviously Sergio's got a bold head. So it was a case of that was, that was what we do. And then at, at the meal, um, they, they can come up to you and cheers you with a glass of wine. So as you can imagine, there's like 30 of them. So each one can come up to you. Yeah, see them down, see them down. So yeah, I didn't make it out that night, um, but it was a it was a great evening. Who um did you so see on Sergio? Was he a good bloke to to play with? Yeah, yeah, he was. He was a great. Guy. Well, that sounds like a loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just wondering. He, listen, <laughs> all right. <laughs> he, was always, he was always good on the piss afterwards. I'll never forget. I think it was my first game, first start maybe for Scotland was in Italy. And I remember going out with Jim Hamilton after he was like, come on, we'll go outside for a drink. And I went out and there was Jim and Sergio just sat there having a fag outside the uh, outside <laughs> the front door of this like beautiful white building on top of this, this hill above Rome. It was amazing. Yeah. Um, but no, he was a good bloke off the field. He, I just remember him being quite, well, it was the way he spoke to the refs and things like that. I was like, mate, rein it in a bit on the field. You know what I mean, yeah. he, he, he had a lot of power, didn't he? He did. He's very passionate when it comes to rugby as well. But he he, he was he was a great guy. So obviously coming into the squad initially, like the Italian w- wasn't great, um, and the fact that he would sit down with me and make sure I understood everything would speak volumes. Because because you know as as the kind of 
power he had and the rugby name he had. He didn't have to do that. Um, but the fact he was making sure that kind of on the same page, and that was when I wasn't playing as well, to, you know, before, um, just to make sure that kind of everything was understood and what was going on. Um, you know, that's just time out of his day he didn't need to do. But, you know, that, I think that in itself, and given given the fact of how high up he is in the rugby world, that's, that, was pretty, that was a pretty cool experience coming into it. Jake, clear this up for us. We've heard that, did, did the team spend a medical budget for a game on a night out instead? No, so, so it, wasn't, it wasn't a medical budget. Uh, I've, 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 uh, yeah, so the, the confusion is they were going, so like uh, when we first arrived um, and there was this big thing, we didn't have game readies. Um, so it wasn't like a, a medical budget, but they would go and blow, I don't know how much the price was, but like three or four grand on a meal. Uh, but they wouldn't go and buy a game ready for, <laughs> for the squad. So it was like we would, as a player, we got together, as a player group, we got together and said, no, like, uh, although we love it, we have to scrap this scrap this meal and get a fucking game ready. <laughs> oh, no, so, bag of ice will do, mate. You get on the yeah. piss. And then you can imagine like the whole, <laughs> we, we need our food, our wine and our socials. Yeah, so it was, we got, we got it in the end and it's, it's a lot better than, than it was. But oh, God it was, the, the traditions, as you can imagine, are there and very deep installed. Uh, explain game ready for 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 the layman. Uh, so it's it's a uh, essentially an ice machine uh, that you put ice into uh, and it pumps it. And you put it onto different body parts. So you've got different, uh, I would say, sleeves for for different body parts, and it pumps kind of ice water around a joint rather than kind of just putting a bag of ice on. Uh, and they're very good. They they compress, release, uh, and pump yeah, freezing water around around Z limb. Not more importantly, art Not cafe. More... Art, art cafe. What a place. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> that's literally next to the rugby hotel, isn't it? <laughs> Holy heck! I've had some nice <laughs> Under, in there. underneath underneath the park. Yeah, <laughs> Max, this place you like? It's you walk next to like a dual carriageway, like a motorway, and then suddenly you just go down these steps under this park. You're like, what is this? And then you enter this layer of just steaming Italians. Very good place. <laughs> oh, sounds like my kind of devilry. Yeah, Astro yeah. Giovanni just sort of. Yeah, yeah. Oh, just telling people where to go. Drink you. Yeah, oh, that's fantastic. As the as our end of season forfeit last season, we did the Gloucester Milk Challenge, which a certain Max Laheef uh, succeeded in doing. Uh, Ryan Wilson failing incredibly. Um, how did you fare on the infamous Gloucester Milk Challenge? I got to I think either six and a half or seven pints, and then I was dust. Yeah, I even tried to time it properly as well and I was like I'm really gonna get each pint in at certain times and yeah it just it takes it takes a great human to do it uh there's 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 are few and far far between but uh <laughs> there are there are the odd specimens that can so fair play so but it is I mean afterwards I mean your guts are in bits you, you oh my god horse. Like <laughs> there is, I so at the time I was living in Bristol and still traveling up, and I had stopped like three times. I think one was on just a <laughs> for a piss because you've got so much liquid in you, and you can only puke up so much. If you're drinking seven pints and you're being sick, you're only sicking up three or four pints. The rest oh, of it's just, I don't know, mate. Have you ever seen, <laughs> have you seen me? I threw up, I must have drunk six pints and thrown up eight somehow. I don't know how it happened, <laughs> and then was shitting bird shit for the next two days. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and yeah see, that first dump was strange. Yeah. Very strange. Dude, what I dude licked that white dog shit. That was like it was like that. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 funny because like whenever we announce it or anything like that, like uh, this it's always before the photos, um, because obviously you have to have your photos with your shaved head or not shaved head, but um it's it's before the photos, but they try and keep it as quiet, like nobody knew this year. Um and you keep it as quiet as possible because obviously boys start planning what they're gonna eat. So if you if you say like milk challenge, they'll try and do an empty stomach and stuff like that. So you try and keep it as much of a surprise as possible. So there's no planning going on. Um, but yeah, it is, it is eight pints apart from Lud's fucked up once and gave the boys seven pints. Cause it's like, there's this, I think it's like, the, like I'm going to say this wrong, but Cravendale milk, I think it's in a two liter bottle, not a 2.2. <laughs> so like yeah. that, that would then screw up how many pints you have to have. So if you had two of those, it'd be less and stuff like that. So I think one year boys got away with it. Um, and some boys still didn't complete it. So, it's obviously quite a big challenge, but I don't know if you know about Albert this year. Yeah, what happened? So he shaved his head, didn't he? he oh he no, ch- someone spoke about him the other day, didn't they? On it. Uh, what is in is in on here? The who was it? I swear someone spoke about it, or maybe I saw. Oh, I saw something on Adam Hastings talking about him. Yeah, tell us what happened with him. Sorry. It, so we we was obviously like 
there wasn't many signings at Gloucester this year. So it was Academy Boys and Albert. Um, and we were all like, Albert's going to smash this. He is a massive human being. So we were like, we were backing him. And he's gone, he's gone, the time has started, 20 minutes is rolling. And he has gone, bear in mind, we'd explain to him, look, mate, like, you know, we're not experts here. You do you. But, you know, if you've got 20 minutes to drink it, you know, you, you do your pints as you go. And by the 20th minute, you need to, you need to finish. But you know, he's nailed about four pints within like the first five minutes. And we're just like, <laughs> we, either, we either got, you know, this, this guy's going to blow up or, or, you know, he's, he's just going to, he just doesn't care. And he's just going to absolutely smash it. But uh, eventually it slowed down. So I think you could feel it a little bit. They got to like, uh, the rest of the boys were out and it was like 19 minutes, 30. And we were like, mate, you've got 30 seconds. He had like a half a pint full of, uh, could only be half hair, half milk. It was because all the boys were shaving. I don't even know if he had realised. Um, and yeah, he, he's, he's getting, he's getting to the end of it. And then he, we've gone. So obviously everyone's ecstatic. He's like, yes, he's a, He's going to do it. He's going to nail it. So we're all counting down like three, two. And then as we said one, <laughs> it's ah. like one of those cartoons where he's gone like that. His cheeks have just exploded. <laughs> and, then <he's, laughs> and then literally you can picture ah. it. It's all come out. And he is absolutely gutted because he's because oh. you know, <laughs> he was so close. Uh, and I've, I've never seen it as close as that. It was literally one, like one second. I shit you not. One second. And he'd have been fine. And I think... He even finished it with like like five seconds to go. So, you know, the timing was slightly off there. But um, I think by the way he started the game, uh, the game by the way he started the challenge, I think he uh, he clearly, <laughs> clearly didn't have the timings quite nailed that, but it's so funny. Hey, mate, he comes like that. Like, like you yeah. were, Max. Literally, as yeah. soon as we said one, you've done it, Max. <laughs> He's gone. <laughs> gone. <laughs> You know, yes. no, I, but I don't think doing it on an empty stomach is a good idea. I tried that tactic. It didn't work. <laughs> I, the only thing I can think is it might, might free up some space, but because you need a lot of space. But yeah, I don't, I don't know. I think uh, if I had a big meal and then tried to do it, I think I wouldn't just be puking up milk. So I think there's, <laughs> that's probably why. <laughs> I, still, I still reckon I could do it. <laughs> no, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, sure. the bravado of the man. Nah, I reckon I could do it. I reckon it was just a bad day. I, I, do you know what? I'll try it again. We should try it again and actually shave your heads, Max. That shit is so uncomfortable, isn't it? Oh. <laughs> Would you so do it again? No way. Still, when he went oh, to sure. Gloucester. So, so yeah. I. I was so surprised that Jordy got. Well, no, I wasn't actually. That. He's a he's a grub, Jordy. So I wasn't surprised he got it down. <laughs> I've seen him guzzle some mad things in my life, but like I was like, what the hell? I thought he, I thought he might have to like be a dreadless Jordy Reed. That would have been strange. He was fully prepared to lose it as well, which is you know, oh yeah, no, he would have bought into it fully. He's not even attached to that hair emotionally. He's just yeah. like it's just there. You <laughs> know as well. He he smashed it as well. Yeah, knocked it out of the park. He, like you could catch him on off day and be like Jordy milk challenge, and he just do it. I mean, like yeah. beer, he'll do it. I mean, like it's. it's, it's <laughs> <laughs> he's a psycho that bloke um right let's move on from the uh milk challenge and go to uh a, a amazing time for italy in uh in the six nations this year that famous victory against wales jake before that see they hadn't won a game in the competition in over five years how hard is it to go from a team like gloucester with all that international pedigree and then go and and get beaten more regularly on the international stage yeah, it is. It is tough. I think um, you know it's the way the way we kind of look at it is 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 a a kind of a long term process. I think you know if you if you take kind of the squad we had and the squad we're building, it, it's it's difficult because it's always like sports sports results based, right? Everyone wants kind of results and everyone wants it quickly. But I'd like to think that the transition we're making into this new squad, which I haven't been a part of for for, for you know God knows how long now, but even even when we watch the games, I think you know the fact that kind of we can beat Wales now and hopefully build on that as well. But the, the performances we're putting in, I think, you know, it's the first time really, <clears throat> if if we, you know, like you said, it's a long time since one of Six Nations, but we beat Wales and, you know, I hear people saying we actually deserved it. And and that kind of, I'm hoping that will flip the chart and, and hopefully we can kind of keep building on our young squad that we've got. But in terms of how hard it is to deal with it, it's, you know, it's, it's tough. Like as, as sportsmen, you kind of giving it your all and putting your body on the line and, potentially your career on the line as well with a, with a slip or, or, or you know, a, a nasty injury. And, you know, you've got, you've got fans that are, and I love them because, you know, they, they're, they're everything about the sport. But when you read the comments, you know, about that kind of either that's Georgia or, you know, Italy's shit or you can't win or anything like that, any negative comments or that, it does have its, its draining, draining fact on it. But the fact that, 
kind of you mentioned there that Italy haven't won for so long and we get you know crazy fans that just absolutely love it you know Six Nations they turn up they got the shirts on they're singing I think any any other kind of country would have would have almost given up on their supporters uh, on the on the players but they're just so passionate and just absolutely love it it's it's an amazing atmosphere regardless um but the kind of the the negativity around it is difficult um and like you say going between kind of Gloucester and Italy um re- results wise it is tough but the only thing I can say is that you know Six Nations is you know one of the best tournaments and to, to be one of the better teams or improve, you, you've got to just put your neck on the line and, and be, get out there. And the amount of learning to be take from doing Six Nations, I think the only thing, you know, by taking Italy out or take us out, and um, you're not, it, it's not going to improve the sport uh, f- for us. And I don't don't see that as being, a, a, you know, a good thing for for rugby and Italy in, in general. Um, yeah, so that, that's my opinions on it. But I'm sure everyone else is is kind of different. Everyone has their own opinions, don't they? But it is, it is, it is a tough spot, but hopefully we can improve on it and, and kind of build on something. What's the aim for the World Cup next year? Like, how well do you do you lads think you can go? It's, it's always, you know, it's the same in in, in twenty nineteen when I was in, <clears throat> involved in it. But it's just a, we we want to get like get out of the group. Like that is that is our biggest our biggest kind of challenge and our biggest kind of emphasis that we want to do because um, you know we we just want to be kind of the best Italian team and to, to get out of the group that's that's you know that's everything we kind of are and that's what we set our I can only talk about what kind of what we planned for 2019 but um because I again I had because I haven't been involved in this squad I don't quite get the because I've I've met Kieran uh, I met him the other day but I, I don't know the training and around the squad it's all changed as, as you can imagine. Um so but that was our plan in 2019 and I think albeit from 20, uh two red cards um you know I think that kind of kind of screwed us over, I suppose. But against South Africa, we had two red cards, um, you know, and they went on to win it. So it was obviously a great side. But that was our biggest, biggest game and biggest challenge um, was the South African game because, um, and that would have, you know, tipped our kind of the history of Italy rugby, really. Uh, controversially, Ryan, Max, it's Georgia or Italy? I just do a red, I just, you could do promotion relegation games, couldn't you? What happens then? I, I agree. I agree with the promotion relegation. I think because then the teams get an equal crack at it every time they come up one year, then they go down, then they back up, and everyone gets a fair share, fair shout at it. I think that's the fairest way to do it. Really. The, the thing, I, the thing I don't agree with is the five five nations because I don't think that helps anyone. Um, agree. Yeah. Bringing in the South that. Africans. Yeah, yeah bringing yeah. the South Africans. Yeah, because I don't even think the Saffers want that because they can't go play in Japan and earn bank. So. Yeah. <laughs> So I think if you ask a few of them, they'd, uh, they'd, they'd agree with you probably. But yeah, that's the know, only unless thing. they're getting twenty five grand a game like England, then they're, you're all right. You're doing all right. You're doing all right. Yeah. Um, Jake, your dad, Peter Pelledri, Bristol Bears legend. You're obviously a Bristol lad. Have you ever dreamt about returning to play alongside Max Leaf with the Bears? <laughs> uh, very loaded question. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Lifelong dream. Yeah. I'm down here. Yeah, is, is he actually at the club, or is this his? Uh, his... <laughs> that's, his that's his weights board at home. That's all his scores. Yeah. That's, his, uh, that's his own weights log. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, you know what? It's, it was I was at Bristol when I was I was a yeah, youngster academy, um, and played kind of the LB Cup there, so my first professional uh, game, um, and kind of you know never got the opportunity to to be full time with them i suppose um but as i am a bristolian um and italian obviously but a uh, bristolian born um so yeah i don't you know it's a great club it's a great place um i love bristol but obviously loyalties lie with with gloucester because uh, they gave me my opportunity um that you know i kind of got released went to hartbury and then gloucester got gloucester gave me my opportunity really and and owe a lot to them really and especially through my injury as well have great. you got a so- have you got a sauna at gloucester we do now, yeah. Yes. Yeah, now hold on a minute. What the fuck? Have you got, <laughs> you got hot tubs as well? Yeah, hot tubs, cold baths. Yeah. We, yeah. Oh mate, I'm going in tomorrow. I'm gonna, I'm I'm going to plumb my own fucking like, hot tubs in at the club and make sure we get a sauna. <laughs> yeah. Fuck's sake. A quick one on you've got uh, Zach Mercer coming back. I think or oh, coming to to Gloucester next season. How exciting is that? I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> it's weird because we, you were saying earlier about the uh, kind of January signing, but it's it's not it's not a thing anymore, right? I must guess because you know, people are signing well before 
you know, seasons or, or seasons started. I mean, I don't even think we played a Prem game before that was kind of rumoured or announced. Uh, inside source, he's going to tell us how much he's getting as well. Give it, give it <laughs> how much yeah, you, you inside, know. mate. You you must know. You've got an idea. In, You've got in, a ballpark thing, <laughs> right? So, so that you don't get in trouble, just give us a number between I love. three and six, and obviously that means hundred thousand. So between uh, three and six, I, give me I, a number. I would, I would literally have no idea, and I don't want to get thrown under the bus for saying that. Oh, were... shit, man. J- J- Jake, the alternative that you realise is the boys just say whatever they say, and then that ends up becoming <laughs> real. So you've actually got a chance to help Zach here. <laughs> you must. They're, they're, okay, there's got, some people are throwing some whispers around the club, right? Boys having a chat in the change room, having a laugh. What are they saying he's getting? What are the boys in the change room saying he's getting? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I literally, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Mate, is, is, is above half a million getting thrown around? Uh, I, I wouldn't have a clue. All I know is he's day bought, long, all day long above half a million. Pelly house, says. On Pelly Square. That's all I know. No, he hasn't done that. <laughs> above half a million. I can't believe that. I, well, I can. I can. <laughs> I, 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 here first, folks. Jake Blood. Jake fifty bags here. Nice, Jake. Worst New Zealand sign. <laughs> Zach on half a million. Yeah, there you go. We've got plenty of headlines. <laughs> yeah, he must be getting some serious cash. Yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't know. I would only, I would only suggest it, it must be, it must be good because he's coming back from France. I have no idea. What's Ange? What's little Ange getting at Toulouse? Which what? Say again. Little what's Ange. Andrew? What's little Ange? Ange Capowitzo again. Uh, Capowitzo. I, I don't know. I've never met. Him. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you give me 24 hours, I can find out. <laughs> yeah, if you can let us know, we'll just pop it in. Yeah, yeah I'll come note. back with a list of salaries that you just want me to find out. That'll be yeah. fine. Yeah. Thanks, mate. Thanks. Oh, mate. <laughs> well, over half. We'll have to get Zach back on just to ask him that question yeah, just for just like a minute. Him. Yeah. 30 seconds you've got, or you're gone. I mean, essentially, ninety percent of the podcast is 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 Ryan musing about how much other people are getting paid. Yeah, but it's all people really want to know, isn't it? Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I wonder. Oh, I wonder how much she's getting paid. Like, 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 yeah. You know, like you know, when you play FIFA, you do like managers, and you go on the salaries. They're all <laughs> <laughs> salaries are all there. Yeah. You can create your own game, mate. You just do your research. Mate, we <laughs> could we could have a little part of the, the podcast where we find out people's wages and <laughs> yeah. put it in there. You go, can you believe? <laughs> Wil- Wilson's Wonga section. Yeah, Wilson's yeah. Wonga section. That's <laughs> Yeah, but actually, the good the good bit was when we had your mate Finn Russell on here, and it's like he couldn't even argue because you knew what he was on. So we were like, you know, you're on shitloads of cash. Now tell us how you spend it, and that yeah. was half the show. <laughs> yeah, fickle. We're fickle, aren't we, Max? <laughs> oh, you oh, speak for yourself, old boy. <laughs> <laughs> mate, what we what we do with half a million in Bali, mate? That'd be amazing. <laughs> oh my god, You'd never you could probably buy the villain. You wouldn't be coming back, pal. You, you wouldn't come back. It'd be, it'd be over for you. You wouldn't have a bike back or anything a beach. <laughs> yeah. You'd be outstanding. I'd build like a mega complex on the beach, just like a jungle gym, like in Tulum, but on, on, on <laughs> Bali. Yeah. I actually, I can see Max actually ending up doing this. Can't you? Like in oh. like four or five years, he's like. Oh, just put it out exactly there. The universal reward as necessary. And I've got Did a little you... bar next door. Can you do your. Yeah, yeah. Do your cooking videos as well, mate. That's so oh yeah. I'll keep that going. I'll keep that going. That's always fun. Yeah. I've got some good stuff. I've got. A, 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 I'm delving into the realms of the Caribbean. Got some good <laughs> stuff coming forward. Yeah, really tasty. <laughs> yeah. Um. Right. Let's finish off with some quick fire questions for you, Jake. First things that come to your mind. Uh, biggest fight you've ever witnessed in training. Um. Uh, I would say I've seen, uh, I think it'd be Moriarty. He, he was pretty feisty. Um, I think him and Mott were going at it once, uh, who, who's now in France. But they, they, they were getting pretty tasty. Yeah, that would be my answer to that. Uh, best player you've ever played against? Um, uh, Ardi Tavera. Or Kieran Reid after I bumped him. <laughs> He was before, but then. <laughs> uh, loosest teammate you've ever played with? Uh, Geordie's pretty loose. Geordie oh. Reid. 
one of the <laughs> loosest men to ever sling <laughs> sling alcohol. This <laughs> is anything, yeah. And then when he gets looser, because he's got the dreads, and there's no offense yeah. against dreads, it looks it looks yeah. like we picked him up in the corner of a street. <laughs> yeah, and he doesn't care about what he wears. All of his clothes are like freebies and stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love him, man. You're one of a guy. Some boy. Some boy. Yeah. Uh, worst enemy in rugby. Uh, enemy. Um, do you know what? Hooper never swapped the shirt with me. I, I was just going to put it out there. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, <it's> funny. <laughs> I've, I've, I've always, <laughs> it's always because I, I was quite new to the scene and it uh, kind of just made me feel about this big. So that was, that yeah, was that's bullshit. Go on. Go on, talk through it. So, um, <laughs> just so you know, Mark, it's customary after an international game, you take your shirt and you say, Oh, mate, any chance we can swap? Seven and a seven, always the way. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, might, uh, did he have a good excuse? Don't tell me I have a good excuse. Just make it I, up. If he didn't have a good excuse, make it up. <laughs> he called me a dickhead. No, he's, he's, <laughs> he, he said that it was it was really quite... So I just went into the change room. So like, obviously, like, I knew nobody was there or whatever. So just went in there. I was just kind of trying to find him. and was like, mate, can we swap shirts? And he was like, uh, just quite bluntly, was like, no, nah, I need it. And then kind of almost just just walked away so it did yeah and then the media man came up and was like oh sorry like he always apologized for him but i think um he's quite i, I don't know him uh, I, he's quite a quite a passionate guy i can only put it down to obviously that it was quite a close game between us um so i think he was probably a little bit disappointed but yeah it was it was uh, a shit <laughs> it did make me feel like a dickhead yeah Boo, Hooper, yeah. boo. What, what's worse? I've had someone give me, you know, the second half jersey that doesn't even have the embroidery on it. <laughs> <laughs> that's fucking, that's worse. Who was that? The shit one, and I didn't even look. I think, didn't think anyone would do that. I can't remember who it was for. I think maybe some are. Anyway, carry on. Brilliant, boys. Well, <laughs> sadly, that is all the time we've got left for this week. That's uh, yeah, a, internet a, for a, while. a huge thank you to it. Uh, <laughs> anxiety filled Max Leaf and uh, to Ryan and Jake thank you so much uh, for talking us through uh, your career so far and good luck with hopefully what's going to be an amazing season cheers thank you very much thanks for having me Jake has been out you all next week bye